When I run this file in JavaScript, it makes a 3D spinning donut. But the neat part is, if I run that exact same file in Python, it also makes a 3D spinning donut. Yes, the exact same file with the exact same code running in two completely different languages. And that's not even it. What if I told you I had the ability to take any JS and any Python and merge it into a single file that can be run in both languages? In order to understand how this works and how I got to this point, let's start from the beginning. Code that runs in multiple languages isn't anything new. It's known as a polyglot program, and many have been created for numerous combinations of languages and some for practical purposes. However, after looking around, I wasn't able to find any polyglot JS and Python, and being some of the most popular languages in the world, I thought that they deserved some love. But as for practical uses, well, I'll leave that for you guys to figure out. The rules for a polyglot program are straightforward. I need to be able to take any JavaScript program and any Python program and merge them into a single file that executes the appropriate program based on the language it's run in. Of course, the code has to be syntactically correct in both languages and able to be executed without error or any additional output. This is quite an interesting problem to attack, so feel free to try it out yourself. I'll try to document my thought process chronologically. The first thing that we have to do when approaching a polyglot program is to refine the way that we look at it. Instead of thinking about how we can make one piece of code that works in both languages and can run differently in both languages, we can break it down into two sub-problems. First, write a program that is syntactically correct in both languages, but does nothing in JavaScript and runs what I want it to in Python. Second, the opposite sub-problem is to write a program that is also syntactically correct in both languages, but does nothing in Python while running what I wanted to in JavaScript. And since both pieces of code are syntactically correct, we can simply append them together into one file as our entire polyglot program. This type of polyglot is known as a zipper. So let's start with the first and reasonably easier subproblem: Python code that, while is syntactically correct in both languages, does nothing in JavaScript. The reason why this is easier comes down to how we typically write polyglot code. For this one subproblem, I'll be using a technique known as a parasite, or essentially hiding Python code in comments of JavaScript code. In JavaScript, we typically write comments in two ways, double slash for single line comments and a slash asterisk for multi-line comments. While the latter is not syntactically correct at all in Python, it just so happens happens that the double slash is. It's the operator for integer division. With this in mind, our current subproblem becomes rather trivial. For example, let's look at what happens in both languages if we simply have the code one double slash one. In Python, this statement evaluates to one, but does nothing. In JavaScript, it ignores the commented portion and is simply one again, which also does nothing. The neat part now is that we can actually put any Python expression after the double slash operator, as long as it eventually evaluates back to a number without having to worry about what happens in JavaScript, since it gets ignored by a comment. Specifically, I'll be defining an immediately invoked function expression, or IIFE, with a lambda expression. And before we return a number in the lambda to make the flooring integer division valid, we'll actually run a statement such as print, and then follow it with or one for our number. Since our first expression, print, returns nothing, Python will evaluate the second part of the or and give us the number we want back. Now that we solved one subproblem, let's see it in action in both languages. In JavaScript, the entire back part is ignored as a comment, and the code evaluates evaluates nothing. But in Python, the lambda function is instantly invoked, evaluating any function we include in it, and also returning a number to satisfy the flooring integer division operator. Technically, most Python code can be rewritten as an expression that you can call in a lambda, but to make our lives easier, I will be using the exec function and including a string of Python code in it, ensuring to port the global's import so that anything can be run without any modifications necessary to the code. Now let's deal with the second subproblem, JavaScript code that, while it is syntactically correct in both languages, does nothing in Python. Let's first try to deal with a parasite approach again as we did earlier, utilizing comments. In Python, you can write comments in two common ways, a leading hashtag on a line for a single line comment or triple quotes for multi-line comments. As for triple quotes, we have no hope there in JavaScript. JS complains about what it sees as two consecutive strings, and as far as I'm concerned, there's no way to make the linter happy there. But hashtags are interesting. As a new addition in ES2022, JavaScript now allows prefixing variables with hashtags for use as a private field, which would make our lives really easy, similar to how the Python flooring division worked. Except the only issue is that private fields only work in classes. You might say to simply create a class around our private field, but here we run into possibly the largest conflict that a JS Python polyglot faces. There is close to no construct that has the same syntax in JS and Python. After all, JS is a C-styled language, which means it uses braces to denote blocks, while Python adheres to the offside rule, which means it uses colons and indentations to denote blocks. 
So a class in JS would look like this, while a Python class like this. Furthermore, the way classes are instantiated are different in the two languages as well. In JS, the new keyword is required, while Python doesn't require that at all and doesn't even have the keyword. So after a lot of struggling, this was as close as I could get with this method. Using an inline static initialization block, I would be able to run any code without initializing a class in JS, which avoids that problem. However, the colon, which is a necessity in Python class declarations, breaks things. Surprisingly, though, Python interprets the braces after the colon, which I was trying out, as an empty set, since everything inside is commented out. So this code works in Python, but doesn't in JavaScript. Another observation that I ended up making was the fact that the eval statement worked in both Python and JavaScript. However, they worked in slightly different ways, and it seemed that it wouldn't help at all, since whatever language you run it in, the eval would run in that language. So it just ended up being the same problem we were trying to solve. At this point, I was rather lost. Comments surely wouldn't work. And similarly to the class issue, I couldn't even use if statements of any variety to potentially avoid code execution in Python. The project seemed rather hopeless. And then I suddenly remembered something. You see, JavaScript's ES2015 introduced a feature known as labels. They allowed you to prefix almost any statement with a label, which was syntactically built as an identifier followed by a colon and then your statement. It just so happens that this looks awfully like a Python block construction. However, I wasn't completely in a clear just yet. JavaScript didn't let any of its keywords be used as identifiers, meaning I couldn't exactly just craft an if statement or a for loop with the identifiers. Furthermore, most Python statements took a conditional expression, like the condition in an if statement, and this would completely mess up the label in JavaScript. But knowing that I was onto something, I quickly went through the list of all Python keywords looking for any expression that wasn't already a keyword in JavaScript, didn't take any conditional statements, and at the same time would cause it to only run in JS, not Python. And eventually, I found it. And honestly, I was pretty annoyed at myself for not thinking of it earlier. It was such a common keyword that worked with these properties, and it was literally right in front of me this entire time. The Lambda expression. For one, Lambda was not a keyword in JavaScript, so I could use it as a label identifier. And furthermore, Lambda functions without parameters do not need anything between a keyword and the colon, so it can be used as a label perfectly fine. But you still might be wondering why this can be useful at all. In Python, whatever is after Lambda will never execute, since it's essentially declaring a nameless function that isn't called. But in JavaScript, the label is simply ignored, since we're not using it, and anything after it executes normally. We've essentially created an expression that only runs in JavaScript. But the last hurdle that we need to jump over is the fact that whatever comes after Lambda still needs to be syntactically valid in both languages, although it is ignored in Python. And that's where that observation about eval we made a bit earlier is helpful. Essentially, we can put the eval right after Lambda containing our payload.js code. And since eval is valid in both languages, but won't be run in Python due to the Lambda, our JS code and the eval won't cause any errors in Python. And just like that, with both subproblems solved, we can put the pieces together. Let's look at both JS and Python interpretations of the same code one last time. In JS, the first line is just a single one with comments ignored. Second line's label is ignored and any JS in the eval is executed normally. Then in Python, the first line is a flooring integer division with an expression injected so that it runs a bit of arbitrary Python before evaluating the flooring division. And the second line defines a Lambda function that is never ran, so the JS code in the eval never causes any errors. This implementation is by no means the only way to create a JS Python polyglot, but after a lot of thinking, it's the best way that I found. And while some might call the eval cheating for the second subproblem, I really couldn't find anything else. If you have a better solution, I'd be happy to see it. And honestly, looking back at the final code, it probably does seem very simple. But coming up with the fact that these expressions can be used as they were was quite a difficult task. If you want to try this out for yourself, I've made a tool known as Polycompiler available on GitHub at github.com slash evanjoedev slash polycompiler that is able to merge any Python and JS file together with this method. Feel free to contribute any new methods that you find to merge JS and Python there. So with that, hope you guys enjoyed today's video and found it interesting. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.